This lesson intro music that you're hearing and seeing me play right now is completely improvised, like completely made up on the spot. In this fingerstyle improvisation video, I am going to show you how to work on playing a full finger picking guitar sound on the fly, just like this. We'll be taking a classic right hand finger picking guitar pattern and improvising melodies on top of that, and also talk about how to improvise chord progressions and how to connect bass notes uh, walking between those chords, all improvised, all on the fly. I'll walk you through a methodical nine step process that will give you a complete fingerstyle sound, totally improvised from scratch, that when somebody hears you play it, they might say, oh, hey, what song is that? How did you learn that? What is that? Where are the tabs? If you're new to finger picking on the guitar, then definitely check out my video on the top four finger picking guitar patterns. That will be a great resource to get you started. There's a link in the description to that video. Step one, here is the pinch pattern. We're gonna do it on G. All you have to do is put down a finger, at this point, whatever finger you want on this third fret lowest string G, and then we're gonna play the open fourth, third, and second string. And the pinch pattern is this. You're gonna do a pinch motion, which is thumb and the M finger, the middle finger, together at the same time. You can see the tabs on the screen here in the notation. And then you're gonna reach your thumb to open D, okay? And then you're going to play your first finger on open G, and that's half of it. And then you're going to break up that pinch and go thumb, middle, thumb, first. Okay, so I'll do that again. Thumb and middle together, then thumb first, then thumb, middle, thumb first. Check out my top four finger picking guitar patterns video, link in the description for a more detailed explanation of that, but that is the pinch pattern. Okay, and you just want to always skip the A string if it's a chord on the sixth string. If it's a chord off the fifth string, then play the same pattern on the middle four strings. If it's a chord off the uh, fourth string, like D, you wanna play the same pattern off the top four strings. So that's pinch off G, pinch off C, pinch off D. Okay, that's the pattern we're using. Let's go to step two. Step two is to do the pinch pattern with the A finger on the next string up. Now you could do this by still using the M finger, but I encourage you to use the A finger. Some players never use more than three fingers, including their thumb, uh, but I think you should use the A finger if possible. Um, so we're gonna do the pinch pattern next string up with the A finger. A is the same as the ring finger. It's A because of the Spanish and Italian words for that finger. Uh, so A is the same as ring, so sometimes they'll say A or ring. Do the pinch pattern with that up next string up with the A finger. Do it on this, just use open E for now, even though it's not in the G triad, and then do it with a chord off the fifth string, like C. You don't need to do this off of D or a chord off the fourth string because there's not a string up to, to use. But that's the next thing to get used to. Let's go to step three. Step three is to alternate playing the full pinch pattern with M and then alternate to using A while you're playing. So I might do two patterns of off M and then two patterns off A. And it's okay, I'm still using that open E on the top. We'll talk about notes to add on top to play melody in a sec, so don't worry about that. You can do it on C as well. M, pinch pattern with A. You can hear it being melodic now. That's quite nice because those two notes are in the C chord. The one, 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 three, three, three of C. One, one, one of C, it's three. Okay, so, and then another great way to do this is within one pinch pattern. You do in the middle of the pattern. Da, ba, 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 or da, 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 da. On C it'll sound nice. Da, 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 da. Makes it up however you want. Just getting used to switching between the strings and these two fingers with the same pattern. Let's move to step four. Step four is to map out the G major scale. We're in the key of G. We're gonna be playing chords in the key of G. It's a great open string key. You can use a capo and do the same physical thing. You can map this out in other keys as well, but we're gonna be doing everything in this key. So we have open B, then C on fret one, D on fret three, next string open E, fret two F sharp, and then G. So just map that out, make sure you can play it. Our melodies over the chords and over the finger picking pattern are gonna be on the top two strings like that. So make sure you see that, feel that, and understand that that's what, those are our note options on top of all the chords that we're gonna be playing. Let's move to step five. Okay, we're getting fancy. We're gonna play our pinch pattern 
and we are going to play the scale on top of it. Okay, so whenever you're ready, go to the next note in the scale. You can, if you know some chord theory, you can think about, whoa, what does that do to the chord? Well, this is a G sus4 right now. Okay. Cool. Well, I'm just playing on the B string still with finger M. Already so cool, playing a right hand pattern and melody on the top. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, and now it's engage that A finger for the open E, and then we have to play F sharp. I like to use my first finger for that, it's gonna feel a little weird and cramped. It's not too bad once you get used to it, and I'll use the pinky to get G on the top. G, F sharp, E, bum, one, seven, six, five, four. So I'm saying the numbers of the scale. So that's what you want to practice now. Can you go up and down the scale on this chord? Don't leave any finger down that you're not using. When I'm done with this note here on the pinky and I go up to the open E in the scale, I let go of it. I'm not going to hold that down. Okay? You can also practice that with the C chord. Same notes on the top. This makes it a Lydian scale if you're thinking of C as the root, as the mode of the major scale. That's, that alone is a cool step. If that's all you do, if that's all you get to, and even with those two chords only, already awesome, already full, already a complete sound. But let's move to step number six. Step six is to switch up the rhythm in a specific way where you're playing eighth notes with the thumb and the melody at the same time. Bum, 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 bum. It's an awesome way to switch it up. Otherwise, the melody is stuck with da, 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 which sounds lovely and full, but now you can go da, 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 da. It's really a nice way to switch it up and not have the melody only be this rhythmically. And you can do it as long as you want or as little as you want. I just happen to kind of do it as a little f a fill in that way. Uh, and of course, with, with the other chord, if you want to practice it there, we're going to add a more, bunch more chords in a second. Uh, but that is step six. Let's move to the next step. Step seven is switching up the rhythm in another way. And you can switch up rhythms and do anything you want. You can add your own steps to this or, you know, have your own style. But these are just a specific um, order of things that I find gets this kind of complete sound for us. This is really fun. We're going to switch up the rhythm in a way where you play the bass first by itself. Boom. And then you play a full chord uh, on top. Boom, boom and then you finish the pattern. So it's kind of like we're creating a new pattern where we go bass chord and then finish off the pattern. Bass chord. So I muted it there so you could hear that. Boom. Boom. You don't have to do this one reason I included it is that when switching chords, and especially with walking bass notes, connecting with bass notes to new chords, it's very useful to just be able to land on the bass note, the root note of a chord by itself and not worry about what's on top, and then add what's on top right after that. Boom, boom, pattern. Bass chord pattern. Okay? That is step seven. Let's move to step eight. Step eight is map out as many chords as you can in the key. Okay? So this is G. The second chord in the key is A minor. Okay, and as you're mapping these out, you can play with the same scale on top. Da, 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 and do the rhythmic thing if you want. You're gonna combine it all in a sec. So A minor is the next chord, B minor is the next chord. Adding just, you know, only of these three melody notes. Actually, I can go. Open B. So I'm not trying to include every melody note. I'm not going to try to reach over here for C natural on this B, just because physically it's not going to not going to give me much. So like when we get to the D chord, all, the only melody notes you're going to get are 
the three notes on the top. So uh, B minor is the third chord of the key. C is the fourth chord of the key. We already played with C a little bit. D is the fifth chord of the key. You get the three melody notes on top like that. You can also just do, you can do D7 for this, D dominant seven. It's a great option. Um, and then E minor, which you only have to put down this finger here because you have an open E and you're skipping the A string. Okay, same melody notes on top. Okay, there is a seventh chord of the key. It would be F sharp half diminished or F diminished triad, uh, but we're not gonna use that chord. We're, we're just gonna use the six chords, the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, the four chord, the five chord, and the six chord of G major. So you're gonna map out your chords. If you're doing this in another key, you wanna map out the chords in your key and see how the scale above it works. So while we're on step eight here, let's just play with connecting it all. Play with the C chord, add a little melody, A minor, G, the one chord. Okay, I'll go to E minor, sixth chord of the key. Okay, maybe I'll go back to A minor. Maybe I'll go to C again. Maybe I'll go to B minor now to include the three chord. to D. I'll go to D7. And then back to G. Okay, so you want to kind of play around with that and now let's move to step nine. The final step is to walk bass notes between the chords. I'm going to advise you just to go by ear with this. Um, if you know the scale theory, one, seven, six, then use the scale theory, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one, to connect between them. If you want to learn about scale theory and seeing it on the fretboard, check out my chord theory series. It's very cool, very in-depth, starts from beginner to advanced on how to see scales and chords and how it's all mapped out on the fretboard. I'll put a link to that series in the description. Um, but you want to walk between the chords and the hardest part is timing it. Boom, 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 boom. Ba, ba, ba. So just practice between two at a time and you'll get used to intuitively how much time do you want to give yourself. If you pause early, and you're like, I'm gonna walk to a chord. Just play it a couple times. Dun, dun, dun. And it just takes a little practice to get used to it. So if I go, boo, 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 boo. So I just did it by ear here. Da, 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 da. That's not even in the scale, but it connected to the D root. There's B minor. So you can connect any way you want. And otherwise just play with everything else we've been doing. I'll give you a bonus tip that wasn't on my list that I didn't think of with the melody. If you can hammer on and pull off, it adds a lot more uh, interest to the melody. it adds another rhythm that's not part of the pattern. So a little uh, unexpected bonus tip at the end there. Those are the nine steps. We're all at different spots in our journey. So I'd love to know which of these nine steps was the most valuable for you. Where are you at in this? What's the most challenging for you? Or just what out of all these things felt like the thing that you needed? Like, oh, that's what's going to take it to the next level. Maybe it was mapping out the scale on top of the chords. Maybe it was just making sure you map out the chords within a key. Uh, maybe it was switching up the rhythm with your finger picking pattern or using the A finger at all. Anything. Uh, I just love to hear where you're at in your journey and your progress. So leave a comment if you feel like sharing. I post a new lesson video every week. Next week's lesson, I'm going to answer one of the most common questions that I get on YouTube, which is why is there a weird scrunchy thing on your guitar? It's going to be a really fun lesson, actually. We're going to talk about overtones and sympathetic vibration and harmonics a little bit and uh, even demonstrate a little bit of tapping. So hope to see you in that lesson. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.